but the wind has picked up quite a bit. The wind's picked up a little bit. See what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but I've just left the right bike. My name is Tim Palmer. I fly a Jodel DR1050 out of this farm strip in East Anglia. I'm sure on the video it's looking quite nice, in fact, a nice blue sky with some lovely clouds, but it is absolutely lovely. And what's more, that direction keeps on changing much better than it was last time we flew, in as much as we would be uh, landing into a headwind, uh, admittedly it would mean we'd be taking off with a tailwind, but it is far too blowy, and believe it or not, about 10 minutes ago we had some snow passing through. So I had to come over to top up some fuel because the last time I flew I did leave very very quickly so I needed to do that. Uh, I also came across to help John bleed the brakes on the RV so I'll include a little bit of that as well as uh, the problems that I was having with the air brake and try and show you what I need to do on that. It's only a little job, but it is quite annoying. Anyway, have a look, see what you think, and uh, leave me a comment. Thanks for watching. It's definitely a two-man job to bleed the brakes on the RV4. The cowlings have to come off, and then, as you'll see in a little while, I have to sit inside and use the pedal while John works outside. This left hand brake, you can see that the line is absolutely full, but on the right hand side, the arrow indicates the very large air bubble which is in the system. So, with me sitting inside and pressing at the right time, it's a matter of depressing the brake. I'm worried about damaging all this wiring down here. Mm. Okay, take your foot off. See, it's just sucked it back again. It makes sense. Um, I got this online. It's um, an artist's paintbrush holder. And the reason I've got it is the fact that um, Karen says that she doesn't like the smell of petrol very much so inside here I've got my dipstick and I've also um, got my fuel strain and the idea being that uh, they stay inside there and with the lid on then that stops the smell of petrol I can just put that into um, the cabin but Trusty dipstick, very, very best thing that I can do for measuring how much fuel I've got. Never very easy to do any of this one-handed. But this is a standard piece of angle. I don't know what wood, whether it's a cedar or something, but what it is, is it does actually mean that it's reasonably easy to read. And you can see I've got 5, 10, 15, I've got 20 litres, well more than 20 litres I need to top that one up. Right. I know this is a little bit ridiculous but I did ask Karen if she would um, do this for me. There's a bath mat and what she's done is she's cut a hole 
If I go the other side and just lock it in place, simply tie that down so that goes over the door latch and just holds that in place. Then when I bring it around here, that sits in there like that and I can open that up and go through the filling process. I don't like the idea of splashing any fuel up onto the top of the canopy. So to protect the perspex, that goes over there like that. Now in order to be able to fuel it up by myself, I've got the funnel with the water trap, um, but I made this contraption up. It's got a, uh, a block of wood there, and that side is built, oh, nearly dropped it. It's like that, so that by the time I put it over the top of the cowling, that will then all hold in place. That comes on there like that. And I can't really see, but it holds it in place. And then I've got the standard water filter funnel. It sits on the top there, holds it in place. And it means that I can just go ahead now and fuel. similar sort of box arrangement for filling up the back tank um, another water trap filter uh, funnel uh, flexible tube uh, legs at slightly different angles the idea being that that can go in there like that it'll hold in place put a little bit of a splash guard on there in order to save anything going up onto the paintwork and then decanting everything is where it should be Nailing traffic, go for Alpha Yankee, Echo Hotel is rolling, nailing traffic. I can't remember whether I've filmed this or not before, but the air brake lever will sometimes lock so that you can't totally push it in the upright position. Sometimes it's a two-handed job, it needs quite a thump. In that first picture here, you can see that it hasn't quite locked home. But in the second one, you'll see that the bar is absolutely in place. If it doesn't lock completely up, you'll notice that the air brake tends to sort of hang in the airflow just a bit. Well, I've been asked about the um, iPad fixing. So that's the way I've got it set up. Um, it's so that when I'm sitting here, I can easily look across and see it. But in order to show you um, how I set it up, I'll see whether I can do that one and make it make sense. I've got a surface mounted uh, ram ball joint onto the corner there 
and to that I have I don't know whether you can see it there but I have a short arm and that short arm in turn comes down and connects to the back of the mount there so you got the um, iPad mount on a short arm connected to the ball joint uh, which is panel mounted that is then connected in such a way tightened up that it sits like that so that by the time I put my iPad in place it sits on there so it's easy for me to see so it's fairly simple really but that's what I do for that I was very pleased and humbled with everybody's response to this particular video when I was having a little bit of a grumble about YouTube analytics but uh, I would like to say a big thank you to everybody who responded and uh, especially to Giles Fowler Giles has his own YouTube channel and took the time to contact me in order to talk through some of the things that he does on his channel and with his videos Hi everyone and welcome to my channel and probably the last video of 2020 and what a strange year 2020 has been for those of us who've been trying to fly or learning to fly for me I've had some really lucky spells but right now I'm looking out the window and it's just not going to be flyable I wanted to fly on New Year's Eve it's just not going to happen this intro is going to be a little bit longer but I wanted to just give a shout out to two of the creators I follow it's interesting to see how our community of YouTube aviators overlaps Giles became aware of my channel after talking with Yulma, that's for Fun Flyer, who I worked with a year ago when we did our Covid collaboration and someone who I've given a shout out to in the past, as is LG who he also acknowledges and I've also included as well. Netherlands and he produces videos about the slightly higher end of uh, the weight range, the 600 kilo micro lights that they can fly over there. Um, but his content is so good. He's got some great interviews with the like of Flight Chops, Mike Patey. Uh, so go and look at his content and go and follow his channel because there's some really, really great videos in there. And the other channel is called Flying Cub. The guy makes some really, really good, useful videos. He's an ex-aircraft engineer and has an absolute passion for making everything as meticulous as he can in all his little projects. He's got an SSDR flying cub, which is why his channel's based that way, but he's come from all sorts of background, from paramotoring and paragliding. So go and check out his channel as well. So let's quickly leave the flight briefing room and I'll join your airways for my last flight of 2020. Neutral? Right. You happy? I'm good to go. I'm a neutral, keeping it straight. Air speed's alive. Happy with the teaser, please. Full power. Coming forward on the bar. In the next video, I hope to have filmed another landing. This one closer to the freshly cut hedge and onto the section of the runway which up until now has been waterlogged. You can see this means a slightly angled approach but I have to say those trees on the left hand side still do seem very very close. 